Welcome back. It's game three. Lineup screen. The benefit of using the bullpen the way we did it in games one and two is that now everyone's available. So that's big. And we're facing John Means. Okay. Let's see. My default lefty lineup here needs a little work. Let's start Tyler Austin. That's what he's here for. He's going to be in left field. And then we'll start Marte. Yeah, at second base. Actually, he's probably... Let's light the load on Marte for a game. Okay. Is Brasso gonna start? Yeah. Let's give Brasso a start against lefties. Hmm. Sure. Spread out some of my right handed hitters. Okay. And again, all of my lineup decisions are made with, you know, I want to compete in this game. I want to give myself a good chance of winning. But I also kind of move, have to move the pieces around to spread out everyone's playing time and usage. Lest I be penalized for, like in the standings basically, and draft picks and that kind of stuff, if you uh, overuse players. And then if you underuse them, I can't protect them in the offseason. They are subject to the draft if I've used less than 50% of their at-bats. So you can't like stash someone who had a terrible year hoping that they'll bounce back without playing them. Oh, what happened here? So two of my fake players ran into each other in the outfield and gave up a double. <laughs> Some of the writing and the text on this is... Kind of cornball-y, but in general, it's pretty good. And I like it enough that I've kept playing this game for, like, this is, I want to say, my fifth year? Fourth year? Fifth year? With this team that I... I inherited Garrett Cole, it's true. And... Odorizzi and, and Paxton, I think, too? But, like, I drafted Chapman and Devers in the same draft, and Kingery in the, in the next one. So, some of it is, a good a good chunk of it is my baby. Ketel Marte is mine. But now we're going to deal with John Means. Who, of course, like makes me think of Natron means. Do we want to go for third base here? Margot is on second base. It is Low Kane, who is going to be making the throw. There's one out. Yeah, let's do it. Margot can fly. Kane's arm strength is... Is it excellent or fair? Which of those two is it? I guess I should have looked before I decided. <laughs> All right, but Margot is in. With one out, I just figured it was worth the risk to have the opportunity to have a sack fly, but King Reed makes it moot. And we've played it our first run. And now Tyler Austin's taken an AB off a of lefty with guys on base, and things, things are good. The turnstiles are moving. If it had said that the ball was in the left field corner, I would have taken third with Kingry there, or try to anyway. But for all I know, the ball could have been right in front of Maven. Like this is one of the things about the game that is less great. All right, now time to look. He's fair, so right center field. I'm just there's not really an upside to this, I guess, of going to third. 
Okay. But I just thought it was very likely to make it because of where the tech said the ball was. But yeah, like, this is one of the things that this game definitely falls short in is... Um, the base running decisions are made kind of difficult because of how ambiguous the descriptors are. It would be better if it shows you maybe, like, something on the graphic shows you where the ball was fielded, maybe? Like, on this field graphic, if a little dot would pop up that says, like, hey, you know, the... The flare single to right field is here, rather than here, which would color my decision as to like going first to third or whatever. By the way, we are absolutely housing uh, the Boston Pinnipeds right now, so that's good. <laughs> All right, so we played three in the first, and yeah, we're just gonna. Try to negotiate this lineup full of right-handed hitters and Josh Reddick and his weird reverse splits. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is going to be one of those where we're going to fast-forward and get in the time machine and I'll see you at the next uh, interesting decision-making point. Checking in at the halfway point. Spent the second inning just wailing on John Means some more. Uh, Manny Margot let off the second with a homer. Tyler Austin hit a two-run homer later that inning. And then Paxton has just coasted to this point. Uh, and Boston has just replaced Means, who was at about 100 pitches, uh, through four with Sam Gaviglio. So that's that. We have a, uh, this is an inter interleague game, and so I wonder if that's been, I think, a little bit of an advantage for me as far as the interacting with the, the pitcher spot. You are rejoining me, bottom eight. Things have pretty much stayed the same. Paxton coasted through seven and two thirds, Got into some trouble. Was up around 120 pitches. And uh, I removed him. And then we got out of the eighth. Opponent has used a couple relievers. Scott Barlow uh, was just brought into the game to start to pitch the bottom of the eighth. So we've now seen most of the the Boston bullpen in this series. So you've got top nine to navigate here with Alec Mills, who is who I used to get out of trouble bottom eight. Just do like his four out, the leverage thing here. And then we'll move on to game four, up to one in this series. And I'll uh, go right to the start of game four and then after game four again we'll have some more instructionally goodies all right welcome back we're going to start game four of this five game interleague series between myself eric longhagen the fan graphs my Pennsylvania Dutch, which are leading this division, you know, West. I should, I guess maybe my team name should make sense with my where I am divisionally. Where's Brian's team? Oh, he's at the bottom of the East after winning the whole thing last year. So rough go of it to start for him. His run differential is is pretty good though. It's fine. That's above 500. Okay. Game four, we're going to go Jake Odorizzi, and then Garrett Cole is going to be the hammer in game five. And that sets up pretty nice for us, right? Because Paxton threw seven and two-thirds last game. Uh, Mills was the only reliever I needed to use, so the bullpen is super-duper rested for an Odorizzi start, which is probably better and potentially more necessary than for a Cole start. Okay. Mike Leak, we've got. 
So feeling pretty good. Odorizzi versus Leak, I feel the matchup is in our favor. <clears throat> I'm actually not even going to use Peralta in this game. Yeah, I know the lefty OBPs are way, way higher, but I feel pretty good about our ability to, to hit Mike Leak. <clears throat> what are some other things about this game and other stuff that you might be interested in? Uh, Voros McCracken used to be in this league not at the same time that I have been so Bill told me that uh, yeah I don't know this is just one of those things that I'm doing the past the time I've been doing some of this as is customary as I said I've been doing it for a couple of years been playing probably more video games than is typical of me but like reading more as well. That's been good. Which is, you know, there's just no baseball. So that sucks. Uh, the championship series that I lost last year, I won the first two games and then dropped four in a row. And all of those games are man were mandatory to play, like, in-person net play, like I'm doing with Brian right now, where we're both making decisions uh, against one another. Typically, if you're the home team, as I am, uh, you can pl you play the regular season games against the computer. And that is what I anticipate will mostly be happening uh, while you watch this series or whatever you want to call it. Kind of a little bit of a scary situation here in the first two guys on all right we escape okay not the most efficient first inning for Odorizzi 18 pitches eight strikes I thought I saw right uh, before the the inning changed over so not uh, not a great beginning but as I said thanks to Paxton the bullpen's very rested so Remember when uh, Mike Leak shoplifted from, like, Coles? That was weird. <laughs> oh, one left field. Yeah, let's go. I'm just going to leverage my speed against Kyle Schwarber and his not speed. Yeah. Very good. It down. Yeah. Center field. Yeah, we're just gonna keep uh running. The team my team runs well. I don't really get an opportunity to use it from a stolen base perspective, not anymore. My original roster had the one I inherited had Billy Hamilton and D Gordon. And Gosh, who else was on some of those teams? And yeah, so I would steal bases with those guys, but I mean, just is mostly a bad idea, which is unfortunate. You're rejoining me top four. I anticipate at some point soon I'm going to have to make a call on Jake Odorizzi 
who, even though he hasn't surrendered a run, has been struggling. Loaded the bases with a couple of walks in the third. Has just kind of generally thrown a lot of pitches. He's due up third this inning. And after I gave up a double to start um, early in last inning, I was worried I was going to have to do something kind of proactive. But I still think here with the three run lead, I'm just hitting with him and trying to, to ride him into the fifth or sixth. Yeah, see, 71 pitches, 43 strikes. I've just sort of wiggled out of fake baseball danger a couple times, and it hasn't been fun. It's not a fun 3 nothing lead that I have. It's stuff like this, yeah, like full count, walk a guy with Schwarber up. This is kind of dicey for a, you know someone who's throwing 82 pitches in four and a third. So I'm inclined to be kind of cautious here. But I don't want to get burnt. But So I'm going to pitch around Schwarber. Okay. Just... Ugh. So maybe there we were punished for Devers being unrated at first base, right? Trickler to Devers. He boots it. Nobody out. So things are looking kind of scary. At what point does it make sense, even if it's right on right? Oh, we turned to double play. Never mind. And Crone was hurt. Okay. So Brian's going to have to make a decision on who replaces Crone at first base. This is one of the other things that the game does is guys get injured. And so if you saw in the in the game log, does it say that he was injured? Yeah. CJ Crone left the game with an injury. Oh, it bumped us down. And it said that he was going to miss seven more days. The way we go about doing it is... Uh, the guy just misses the rest of this series, so you could say, you know, he blew his ACL or whatever, but he'll still be made totally healthy by our commissioner at the, before next series. Injuries are already basically factored into what's going on because if, you're, if your guy was hurt for a period the year before, then you just, his at-bats are lower and you can't use as much of him, so... Uh, Injuries are already kind of baked into the way we are using players or forced to use players. And so we don't we de emphasize it as a part of the game. Left side. Nah, like just a a ground ball through the hole right here just doesn't make sense to go to third. Maybe maybe I'm being dumb and there's something about Schwarber's fielding and throwing ratings and Marte's running ratings that make it so I know he's very likely to be safe, but and like maybe that's knowable somewhere on the internet, but if it's true, I I don't know that. This is working out fine. Anyway. Nah, not with one out. Eighty pitches for Leak. Leak is due up fifth next inning, and he's subbing JB Wendelkin. Okay. The four-run lead is nice. At some point, yes, it might be time to move Manny Margot into the lineup to man center field and kick Marte down to second base. It's probably coming soon. Here's another reverse splits guy in JB Wendelkin. This is the second week in a row that my opponent has, has been heavy on guys with reverse splits. Base hit, Chapman scores, Devers around third. I'm just 
just gonna chill. We're playing Pepperworth, whatever. Let's see. Do I want to hit for Galvis here? It is a pretty big spot. I guess it's probably Peralta time, but reverse split, so I'm just going to go with my highest quality right-handed hitter, which is Kingery. And now that Kingery is at second base, no, we'll still do something. You'll see. All right, so we pick up a run. They get the force at second base. Things are just going to fall where they may here with Casale. If he... Reaches, he didn't. Never mind. Doesn't matter. Okay, so let's play... I am going to remove Odorizzi from the game right now. Margot is going to come into his spot and play center field. Ketel Marte is going to go to second base. And then Kingery, who I brought in, is going to go to left field. And then the pitcher spot is just going to go where Yairo Munoz is. In real life, this makes me better defensively, I think. Just because I think Kingry is a superior left field, like, defender, roam around, cover ground guy than Munoz is. But in the game, they're both just rated as average, so it's it's a net, um, it's just a lateral move, I guess. You could argue that it's dumb in this game to move the pitcher spot up one place here. Actually, yeah, screw that. It doesn't really matter. I'm trying to prevent runs now, basically. So we have Reddick, Longoria, Murphy. So I'm going to bring in a lefty. Jose Alvarado is not thrown yet in this series, so here we go. So we get two lefties here in the sixth. If Brian wants to pinch hit for guys this early, fine. I'll just have the platoon advantage over what... Hit guys from the bench he's brought in later in the game. Uh, if things get close at that time, I'd rather have it then. I do have a lefty-heavy bullpen. I've just been prioritizing dudes with big stuff that I like um, rather than guys who have been healthy or been used a lot. And so I have a lot of Jose Alvarado types where he's thrown 30 innings, 40 innings. And I just have to mix and match those guys all season to try not to overuse any of them. Oh, man, so Maldonado got hurt. That sucks. That sucks for Brian. He's going to have to pick up a catcher between this game and the next. Well, not pick up one up, but promote one from his minor league roster which is only 10 players deep and um, the player universe in this game is just individuals who have played major league baseball so it's not like he's got you know Joey Bart sitting somewhere like Joey Bart's not on someone's roster in, in this game oh come on Alvarado okay all right, so clearly five-run lead here, bottom six. Uh, not really interesting to watch me try to tax him on. So I will see you uh, at the back end of this one, assuming that things go smoothly between now and then. And then you'll uh, be taken to some more lovely backfield action. Top nine, 7-1 game. Things have gone uh, totally fine. We went Jose Alvarado into Genesis Cabrera and to Taylor Rogers, who pitched all of the eighth. I'm going to have him face Brock Holt here, and then I'm going to move on. Yeah, I'll just throw Wing Enter. Yeah, let's throw Mills. It's such a low leverage spot again. I'm just going to save Wing Enter and Barnes. Six runs. So yeah, so this will put us up 3-1 uh, in this five-game interleague series. Revenge, grudge, match thing. Rematch of last year's title. 
series. And we'll see if, uh, if Brian's up for playing another game. We've got about a half hour now but before the the Bulls part, I guess, week two of the, the Bulls doc series comes on TV. So I'm trying to squeeze these guys in right before that before that gets started. Uh, but yeah, here's Alec Mills allowing us to coast to the finish here in game four. I will see you over at the game five lineup screen. And uh, I just do this reflexively where we'll be uh, sitting a lineup behind uh, 2019. The, the stat algorithm of 2019 Garrett Cole.
Welcome back to game five. Assembling a lineup in front of Garrett Cole. And, you know, just leaning heavily on considering usage at this point. I'm not going to put Marte in the lineup. I'm not going to put Peralta in the lineup. Yeah. So we're not punting per se, but definitely making it a little bit harder on ourselves. Uh, just 
based on who's in the lineup today, but that's okay. Garrett Cole is on the mound, after all. And we've got the Series 1. My revenge has been enacted. Yeah, I can, I can type. I'm a good typer. Very good typer. The best typer. And you can see that Garrett Cole's numbers in this game uh, through his first handful of starts for me, 56 innings worth, they're just, they're okay. I mean, he struck out 101 guys. <laughs> I did, he did get bombed in one uh, fake start of mine where he gave up like eight runs. So this, the ERA is actually much higher probably like a full run and yeah like a full run higher than the rest of his starts oh yeah well he clearly hears his real one whoa all right so remember in the last game that martin maldonado got hurt for uh brian's team so he was allowed to between games add somebody from his farm club and that's hoskins who i assume he had farmed for uses reasons too. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. So yeah, we have to deal with him. As you can see, like, hey, two runners have reached on fake immortal Garrett Cole, so Yeah, we'll wrap this up and I'll put on the Bulls dock, start cutting up some of this video with the other, with the uh, Instructional League stuff. It's nice to have something to kind of like mark the time on a Sunday night. And like the draft was great. I watched almost all the NFL draft. But it's not like a consistent, that's a weird thing. That's like a weird air goes in a hole for a weekend thing. It's not a time-marking activity, like spending your Sunday evening watching Dennis Rodman be insane. Unwell, to be clear. Speaking of Dennis Rodman, Kim Jong-un, if you listen to this, get well, buddy. <laughs> he's a he's a fan graph reader. <laughs> no, I can't imagine that you can. I'm sure it's blocked over there. All of our content's very controversial. Oh, he brought up Valoria too. I guess he have. He had a pitcher get hurt last game too, maybe? I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Okay, you are dropping in bottom six. Give up a two-run shot to Kyle Schwarber, top six, countered with solo Matt Chapman bomb this inning. Then Devers, single, and now Willie Adams is up. I took it the first pitch. Now I'm, like, waiting a second uh, before deciding what to – I guess it might not matter. Yeah, I struck out swinging. Took a beat to make Brian on the other end of this think that maybe I was cooking something up uh, with my runner on first. But ultimately, full count, and then Adamus punched out. So now, here's what I've got ahead of me. Galvis, Munoz, Kisner, Cole do up next inning. Cole's at 98 pitches. The 
quality of the contact that he's he gave up there was pretty strong. We have the bottom of the order here, but if someone reaches and we end up having to deal with Holt, Maven, who weirdly has walked twice and has a hit in this game, and then Schwarber, maybe we think about a move, but not unless Strowman reaches here somehow. Or there's a pinch hitter and the pinch hitter reaches. He's sticking with Strowman. That one's pretty tough. 93 pitches for Stroman through six. Pretty dominant innings, really. Not a lot of strikeouts, but um, just really, have, I've not really threatened in this game at all. I just had the solo uh, Matt Chapman homer. I think I'm at the point where if someone reaches and Cole hits in this inning, that I definitely hit for him and probably... I'm thinking it'll probably be David Peralta. I'm actually considering doing it here with Munoz so I don't roll one. Or, like, make it so that it's less likely that I roll one. I really do not want to double play here. My bench is loaded. I think I'm just going to go Peralta for Munoz here. It's a pretty high leverage spot with a runner on. I'm down by one. Prata will be insured another AB in this game. It might be against the lefty, but give me that. All right, so we warning track fly ball. But I really want the pitcher spot to come up so I can you know, give a, an AB with someone on base to another good hitter. Yeah, oh, man. Okay. So Kisner grounded into the double play. Now I'm kind of punished because I'd like to double switch and just stick the pitcher spot in the seven hole. I think now I just let Cole start this inning, but it is against the top of the order. I'm definitely leaving Peralta in. All right. Let's see what happens. He's at 105 pitches, but like, come on, like it's Garrett Cole, right? So maybe I'm punished here, but all right, one out. Cameron Mabin, I'm just going at him. His numbers are really strong against righties, though. Uh oh. All right, so we surrender the double. So now the options are pitch around Schwarber and then pitch to Hoskins, or bring in a lefty to face Schwarber, which is what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm going to double switch. I'm going to bring the lefty into Galvis' spot there in the six hole. We're going to go with Nuke. And then to lead off next inning and play second base is going to be Ketel Marte. And this, this type of thing is probably, you know, this is not a real-world application because Ketel Marte just starts for my team if he's healthy. Uh, but for this game, I have to curb his usage at some point a little bit. And so now, you know, we've played seven innings, whatever, but now it's like winning time. It's a close game, so I'm just going gonna, gonna to bring this dude in now. It's just worth it to use a couple ABs. Anything else coming up that we're going to have to do? No, it's just Marte and then the top of the order. So, all right, we hit a bomb with Marte, so we're tied at two and have the top of the order going. I wonder how long Marcus Stroman is for this, uh, for this world. It might be now against Hayward that Brian decides to make a move. No. All right. It's got to be coming, though. All right. Jose Leclerc is who we get now. Okay. Let's see. So Leclerc. The lefties get to Leclerc. 
So again, really don't want to ground at the two here. Devers getting up in this inning would be big, considering Leclerc's split. So that's what we have. Again, I'm going to I'm gonna take a pitch here and just see what... Ah, see, Brian's thrown over to first, so he decided that. So he's watching the runner. Uh, okay. I'm just going to take... I'm going to see what Brian thinks of me taking. Uh, he, the green light went on pretty fast for me here, so I think he's just... I think he's just pitching endeavors here, 01. Yeah, we're in trouble. Oh, baby. Get going. All right. Yeah, man, the text, the text teases you in this game. When it tells you a ball is belted, it, it makes your heart skip a beat, especially we're getting into the late innings here. Whew, okay. So, Newcomb faced the lefty to start. Longoria is pretty dangerous against the lefties. And then we have Murphy and Valoria. Can I get away with pitching around Longo? And then going at Murphy. Murphy's numbers against lefties are beastly as well. So, probably just smarter to make a move here. Now we will use Wingenter. Sort of our reward for not using him last game. Where do we want to stick him here? The pitcher spot is hitting second next inning. Do I dare remove one of my first four hitters from this game that might go into extra innings? Seems kind of dopey. Maybe Wingenter is not who to bring in. Let's go with Mills, or Barnes, excuse me. I'm going to bring in Barnes. He's just going to go into the Newcomb spot, and I'll just hit for him next inning. I'm going to want to pick who hits next inning anyway, I guess. Having the pitcher spot there is going to let me decide who hits, which maybe will vary depending on if the leadoff hitter reaches. Oh, man. Barnes, as you can see, he's an 8-3-1. ERA for me on the year. He's walked 11 guys in 13 innings, which I know is like not it's not that crazy for Matt Barnes. But it still is like sucked to just watch him fake Matt Barnes totally unravel a bunch of times already about a quarter of the way through the regular season of this league. Be nice to work around this base runner though which it seems like we might be doing maybe I should have walked Valoria there although I'm sure I would have just gotten someone unkind I'm going to pitch around Vasquez with the base open and just deal with whoever comes in here oh we had a wild pitch nope alright Longoria stayed Oh boy, fine. No, not fine. It sounded it, the way I read that. It looked like Hayward was going to make a play on the ball. Okay. Okay. Well, now we're losing by one. Well, with Leclerc, quote unquote, hitting here, I'm sure that he won't be. Okay, man, Matt Barnes. Damn. Fake Matt Barnes killing me. Let's see what he's... Oh. Oh, he just decided to let Leclerc hit. And pitch next inning, I guess. What if I... That's weird. I'm gonna throw over. <laughs> So the, this is oh, just a weird situation. Don't walk the pitcher, please, Matt Barnes. <laughs> please? All right, fine. All right, all was right with the world. All right, Jose Leclerc. 
versus Willie Adamas. I suppose I just have to let that happen, right? And then we're going to hit with a lefty for Barnes. Well, I guess, I mean, it's just going to be Brasso. Or should we go with Gazali? <sighs> nah, let's just do Brasso. Caught a little bit with our pants down here, I guess. Just the clerk splits against righties are so good. But I burnt Peralta already. And he's going to hit here again, too, which is fine. All right, big spot for David Peralta, do or die. I need a base runner. And I have a base runner. I'm not super confident in Kisner reaching here, but like, what choice do I have? Marte looms on deck, though. Get down. Get down. All right, so we lost. So we take the series 3-2. to two. Again, beating the uh, defending champion, Boston Pinnipeds. Thanks to Brian LeClerc for the games. And uh, it, please enjoy this bit of uh, baseball video weirdness. And I hope uh, to do this again soon. Thanks for joining me on, on this weird uh, maiden voyage. And hopefully in the next uh, couple weeks when I've got another home series that I've got to play, we can do this again.